And of course, this fight taking place in the strawweight division. So here she is, Angela Magania. She calls herself Your Majesty. About to kick things off here this morning, the first fighter to step on the scale. She hits her mark, 115 for your majesty, 34 years young. Of course, involved in that incident with Chris Cyborg back in May. Chris Cyborg. Jeremy Kimball. Striking her after some words were exchanged on social media. But she's getting back to work on a Saturday night. We move <coughs> along now. And say hello to Jeremy Kimball. He meets Dominic Reyes, also on the preliminary card. Here comes Jeremy Kimball, 15 and 6 as a professional. They call him the Grizzly. He is stepping on the scale. And he hits his mark. Looking to pick up his second straight UFC victory. That's Jeremy Kimball. He meets Dominic Reyes tomorrow night. Just letting you know. What do they do? What do they hear? Here comes Charles Oliveira stepping on the scale. And he hits his mark, 154 and a half for Charles Oliveira. He meets Paul Felder on Saturday night. This fight was originally supposed to be Ally Quinta against Paul Felder. Ally Quinta had to pull out due to an injury. And in comes Charles Oliveira, who hits his mark. He's had his issues with weight cutting in the past, but not this time. Moving right along, we say hello now to Jakar Close. Gets right on the scale not wasting any time and he hits his mark as well Drakkar close 8 on one as a professional coming off that impressive victory over Mark Casey over the summer he's one half of one of the more interesting fights on this card he meets David Tamor on Saturday night that's Drakkar close fighting out of the lab in Glendale Arizona We say hello now to Felice Herrig. Felice Herrig looking to continue her winning ways. She has an important fight tomorrow night against Courtney Casey in the strawweight division. Here comes Felice Herrig. And she hits her mark. That's 115 and a half for the Little Bulldog. She's won her last three fights in a row. She defeated Kaylin Curran, Alexa Grasso, and then Justine Kish. Tomorrow night she meets Courtney Casey. There's Felice Herrig stopping by and hitting her mark, flanked by former UFC and WEC and Strike Force fighter Jeff Curran. And here's an island boy stepping onto the scale. That's Yancy Medeiros. He was successful last year fighting on the same card as his fellow Hawaiian Max Holloway. He returns. Once again on the same card as Max Holloway, tomorrow meets Alex Cowboy Oliveira. And he hits his mark. Yancy Medeiros, easy work, he says. 170 pounds for the kid. Meeting Alex Oliveira tomorrow night, 14 and four as a professional. We move along now and are about to say hello to Paul Felder, who has really come into his own this year, not only as a fighter, but also as a professional broadcaster. 
<laughs> Ever the thespian, Paul Felder, setting the scene for us. He understands the magic of television and theatrics. Here he comes. Of course, we just saw his opponent, Charles Oliveira, successfully weigh in. Now here comes Paul Felder. Coming off that impressive victory over Stevie Ray's won his last two in a row. And Paul Felder hits his mark, 155 and a half for Paul Felder. They call him the Irish Dragon, one of the rising stars in the lightweight division. Had a fantastic knockout of Alex Ricci back in February. Followed that up with a vicious TKO of one Stevie Ray back in July and looking to now win his third in a row on Saturday night. I'm about to say hello now to the man they call Judo Thunder, Abdul Razak Al Hassan. He is one and one in the UFC. Won his debut against Charlie Ward, dropped his most recent fight against Omari Akhmedov. Tomorrow night, he meets Saba Homasi. And he hits his mark. 170 pounds for Abdul Razak <laughs> Al Hassan, who appears to be in great shape heading into his third. UFC fight. And now it's time to say hello to the Brazilian cowboy himself. Our colleague Guilherme Cruz wrote a fantastic feature on this man, Alex Oliveira. <laughs> Having a good laugh. Also used to have trouble making weight, but these days at 170, it's a lot easier for him. He meets Yancey Medeiros. We saw Medeiros weigh in moments ago. Here comes Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Smile on his face, appears to be in great spirits. 170 and a half. 170 and a half for Alex Cowboy Oliveira. He is unbeaten in his last five fights. Two wins in a row, and then another two wins, sandwiched in between those two wins that no contest against Tim Means. He was able to avenge that and beat Means in March. Most recently, he defeated Ryan LaFleur via <laughs> KO back in July, one of the great knockouts of 2017 that was in New York on Long Island, to be exact. We move along now and say hello to the strawweight Courtney Casey. It has been an interesting year for her. Earlier we saw her opponent Felice Herrig successfully weigh in. Courtney Casey, another fighter fighting out of Hawaii. 115 and a half. 515. That's 115 and a half for Courtney Casey. She's had her issues this year with the Texas Athletic Commission. She was able to overcome those, but it was not without some frustrations and drama and criticism. Mm -hmm. She was on the MMA Hour several months back talking about all that and what it did for her reputation. <laughs> Looking to put it all behind her on Saturday against one Felice Herrick. We'll stay in the strawweight division now and say hello to Tisha Torres. She's competing on the pay-per-view card. They call her the Tiny Tornado. One sixteen for Tisha Torres. She's won her last two fights in a row over Beck Rawlings. Most recently, she submitted Juliana Lima back in July. She's looking for a title shot with a win here. She's tied for being the most tested fighter, drug tested fighter in the UFC. Usada comes knocking at her door and she continues to say hello. 
And how about this? We see Tisha Torres. Now we say hello to her opponent. Michelle Watterson is about to step on the scale. She's flanked by her husband, Josh, always very supportive of her career. A former fighter himself. Here comes the karate hottie, Michelle Watterson, on the scale. That's 115 for Michelle Watterson. She hits her mark as well. Big smile on her face, looking to avenge her recent loss and get back on track. She most recently dropped a fight to Rose Namajunas, now the strawweight queen of the UFC. She's looking to get back to her winning ways, pick up her first win of 2017. That's an important fight in the strawweight division. It's on pay-per-view tomorrow night. So that's Michelle Watterson. That fight now officially in the books. We say hello to Sabah Homasi. We saw his opponent moments ago, Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Yep. Say hello now to Sabah Homasi, who's about to step on the scale. They call him the problem. He lets out a bit of a Big breath there. He's fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, of course, American Top Team. And he hits his mark. That's 170 and a half, so that means that fight is official. Sabah Homasi, 11 and 6 as a professional. Recently lost to Tim Means. That was quite some time ago. UFC 202, to be exact, over a year ago. And he's being joined here today by Jorge Masvidal, who's in attendance. One of the faces of American Top Team, there he is, the Game Bread, supporting his teammate Sabah Homasi. We move along now and say hello to the American Kickboxing Academy's Justin Willis. He's one half of the curtain jerker on Saturday, meeting Alan Crowder, looking to go 2 0 in the UFC. There's Justin Willis on the scale. <laughs> That's 265 for Justin Willis, who was successful against James Mulhern. Back in July, and tomorrow night he meets Alan Crowder. They call him Big Pretty, 5-1 and one as a professional former WSOF fighter, one of the big boys of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and he hits the heavyweight limit. That's 265 for Justin Willis. It's always fun when you get to see the opponents go back-to-back, -back, and that's the case with this fight. Here comes Alan Crowder following up Justin Willis, so we can put this fight in the books, hopefully in a matter of moments. Alan Crowder, 9-2 and two as a professional, making his UFC debut, though he was a part of Dana White's contender series over the summer, picked up a win back in August. Here's Alan Crowder with the gentleman's haircut, interesting tattoo. 237 for Alan Crowder, and he's very happy that he hit his mark heading into his official UFC debut, has fought for Bellator as well, hasn't lost in over two years, and so that means the Alan Crowder-Justin Willis fight is official. We say hello now to Amanda Cooper, we just saw her opponent kick things off around 18 minutes ago was Angela Magana, now we say hello to ABC Cooper. And here comes Amanda Cooper. Angela Magania has actually reemerged to watch her opponent weigh in. There's no love lost between these two. She steps on the scale. And she hits her mark. 116 for Amanda Cooper. Looking to pick up her third UFC win. Excuse me, her second UFC win. She was also on the Ultimate Fighter. Won three fights on that season. But officially, she is 
one and two in the ultimate fighting championship fought in the finale of the 23rd season against Tatiana Suarez dropped that and looking to get back on track against Angela Magana. and how about this here comes Eddie Alvarez the underground king himself the former Bellator lightweight champion the former UFC lightweight champion says tomorrow night he is fighting for the violent championship of the world one of the great fighters in the history of the sport stepping on the scale and he hits his mark that's 155 that's 155 for Eddie Alvarez who apologizes and says he thought that he was fighting for a title well he is fighting for a title he says he's fighting for the violent championship of the world Justin Gaethje says he has that belt already. That's Kensington, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania's own Eddie Alvarez stopping by. He hits his mark, and it's great to see him back in action. One of the pioneers of mixed martial arts and one half of the people's main event on Saturday night. A lot of buzz, a lot of hype, a lot of anticipation heading into the Justin Gaethje versus Eddie Alvarez fight. A lot of interest heading into the flyweight fight on the main card as well. There you see Sergio Pettis, the younger brother of Anthony Pettis, stepping on the scale. 16-2 and two as a professional. He has enjoyed some winning ways as of late. And he hits his mark. That's 126 for Sergio Pettis, the phenom. He's won his last four in a row. He's coming off that impressive victory over Brandon Moreno. Back in August, he meets Henry Cejudo. This was a fight that we were expecting to see back in May. Cejudo pulled out due to an injured hand. We're hopefully going to see it on Saturday. And how about this? Here comes the reigning, defending UFC featherweight champion, Max <coughs> Blessed Holloway. He is... Asking for a towel. Uh, appears to be in somewhat of a dehydrated state. And here's Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje emerging as a towel holder here. You never know what to expect. Oh, and uh, Gaethje now, not an official towel holder, and almost had a bit of a wardrobe malfunction there, but we are proceeding. Featherweight champion. Hits his mark. Max Holloway, 145 pounds. You see his nutritionist there with him, Tyler Minton, one of the best. Appears to be a little dehydrated. Justin Gaethje with the assist. And there he is, the featherweight champion of the UFC, signaling that he is going to remain champion. We are firmly entrenched in the blessed era, and he is looking to replay what he did back in June in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. That's when he won the belt against Jose Aldo. He meets Jose Aldo on Saturday night. Moving right along here, here comes Justin Gaethje. One of a kind. He, he hits his mark, 156 for Justin Gaethje. With a big smile on his face, a fan favorite. They don't make him like Justin Gaethje every day. He is Certainly a, new, a unique fighter. He's the kind of fighter that the fans love because of his reckless style. <coughs> we say hello now to the predator, Francis Nganou. Kind enough to say hello to everyone in attendance. Here he comes, Francis Nganou. Now training out of Las Vegas, born in Cameroon has resided, of course, in Paris, France. He hits his mark, 262 pounds for Francis Ngannou. The UFC has a lot invested in this man. He's 5-0 in the UFC. He meets Alistair Overeem tomorrow night. And many people believe that if he wins this fight, he would be next in line for a heavyweight title shot against the current king. 
Stipe Miocic. Well, we'll pause that and say hello now to Dominic Reyes as we continue with our weigh-ins. Here comes Dominic Reyes. Stepping on the scale. He hits his mark. Tom, 205 for Dominic Reyes. He's flanked by Joe Stevenson. Joe Daddy Stevenson is here, the former UFC fighter, helping out his friend and training partner, one Dominic Reyes. They call him the Devastator, 7-0 and as a professional. He meets Jeremy Kimball tomorrow night, and he is looking to go 2-0. and He won a performance of the night bonus back in June. And we'll pause that thought and say hello to David Tamor. He's coming off a great victory earlier this year. Sweden's own David Tamor. We saw his opponent, Drakkar Close, weigh in. Six and one as a professional. He meets. Car close in an important lightweight fight. Here's David Tamor weighing in. He's won his last three in a row. In, and he hits his mark. That's 156 for David Tamor coming off that win over Lando Venata, one of the best of 2017. Back at UFC 209, looking to win his fourth. UFC fight is David Tamor, who successfully weighs in. So that fight is now officially in the books, and I do believe we are going to say hello to Henry Cejudo, the former Olympic gold medalist. We saw his opponent, Sergio Pettis, weigh in. Here's Henry Cejudo. It's always interesting when he weighs in. He's looked very good as of late. Steps on the scale. And he hits his mark. That's 126 for Henry Cejudo. Great job by him looking to go 2-0 and in his last two fights. He's coming off that win over Wilson Hayes. Smile on his face. Gives a nice... We pause that thought and say hello now to the former Strike Force heavyweight champion who makes a point to say hello to Mark Ratner. No interest in derobing over him, who always takes his time, smile on his face. The Michigan Commission asking him to take off his jacket, but willing to take off his shirt is Alistair Ophrim. He's always very bashful, as you know, not wanting to expose himself to the public here. He's smiling in great spirits. Look at that smile. 247 for Alistair Ophrim. It's not his first rodeo, Alistair Ophrim, but putting up a triangle of some sort. Not sure what that represents. But the important news is that his fight against Francis Ngannou is official. So 247 pounds for the great Alistair Overeem. And here he comes. There he is, the former UFC featherweight champion, Jose Aldo, with his hands on his hip. He appears to be a little bit out of sorts, but he steps on the scale. That's always a tough cut. 146. 146 for Jose Aldo. That is a problem. That is a problem. He needs to weigh 145. That is a problem. His team clapping, but he needs to weigh 145. Aldo now clearly in pain. He is... Clearly in pain, he has his hands on his knees. He's dropping his shorts now. He's giving this another go. 
And he is a little bit out of sorts here. He has to weigh 145 pounds for this title fight to be official. And he hits his mark. That's 145 for Jose Aldo. So a bit of drama there. A little bit of confusion. He hits 145 on his second attempt. He dropped his shorts, which apparently weigh one pound. And we are now good to go. There you see Junior Jose Aldo, who hits his mark 145 pounds. He is no stranger to that number. He is the longest reigning featherweight champion in the history of the UFC. And that means not only is tomorrow night's headliner official, the entire card is official. Everyone successfully makes weight. No real drama this morning. A little bit of a hiccup there, but it's all good. UFC 218 is good to go. We are hours away now, and later on today we'll have the ceremonial weigh-ins. We'll be back for that and, of course, our preview show. For now, we'll say goodbye. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Thank you for watching our coverage of the UFC 218 official weigh-ins. We'll see you later today.